Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months I make 200 to 300 bucks. <laughs> Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code FILL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code FILL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code FILL. Welcome back to the second installment of our Spooktober Spectacular. Come and have a seat. We saved you a nice comfy spot right next to the corpse fire. Tucked away in the hills of Southern California sits a villainous valley steeped in terrifying tales. Rumored to have been the site of an ancient Native American burial ground where the spirits of those who were brutally cut down by Spanish invaders still make their presence known to this very day. Local legend places more than a few accounts of mysterious murders and occult occurrences between the brush-covered ravine walls. There's even a tale of a shocking science experiment that may have been responsible for the disappearance of an intrepid inventor bent on bending the weather to his will. This case file joined the theorists as they hiked the haunted hills around the gruesome gorge known as... Turnbull Canyon. <laughs> Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing. Case file 208, Turnbull Canyon. I'm Spooky Braden. I'm Weirded Out Zell. <laughs> I'm Dan. And I'm the Scarlet Mongoose. <laughs> Scarlet Mongoose. <laughs> you, just re- you repurposed your last week's costume. What are you talking about? <laughs> I Scarlet Spider now. Damn, <laughs> fucking, I'm Ben Riley this week. Last week I was Peter Parker. It's That's different. fair. Told, they're clones of the same person, but they're still different. Live in the Spideyverse. Hell yeah, buddy. Uh, week week two is Spooktober, but before we get going onto this, uh, onto Turnbull Canyon, I oh, so I updated my firewall after the ATI started hacking me. Good. So now they sent me Fucking. a threatening email with a video that I have to play. <laughs> it's degenerates. So I'm just, so I'm just gonna. It's and I, I would I prefer it this way. I prefer the threat rather than a computer takeover. So let's see what these fuckers are up to this week. The following announcement has been paid for by Alien Theorist Illuminati. It's creepy. It's super creepy. Gonna get us flagged by YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to be another year older? We've been watching you grow the past number of years. Getting older, needing glasses, losing strands of hair. And after all we've watched you go through, 
We can say that Fat Braden is fire, <laughs> and Mr. Conspiracy is the winter sun. Okay. <laughs> we're coming. I guess we're not monetizing this one. Yeah, this <laughs> one's done. <laughs> Herbie Hancock. <laughs> she had little. some strong uh, Bray Wyatt vibes in that video. That was creepy oh, yeah. as hell. All right, that was a little uh, a little happy birthday to Braden. Yeah, which it's is not my birthday, but not quite yet. But <laughs> while this is released, it'll be yeah, post yeah, birthday. Yeah, after. I appreciate the the thought the ATI put into showing me in my ginch. <laughs> Doing the nice nice stomach rolls. Stomach good rolls. Yeah. It's good look. I like that. Uh, out in it. Fat Braden is funnier and Mr. Conspiracy is the better son. <laughs> he, he just just spitting facts. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but facts. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank, th- thank you Anyways. ATI for not trying to thank break you, through ATI. my new firewall and uh, saving my computer. Now you can't do you can't follow through on the threats that you posted in that email. So Yeah. You better not. Suck it. Now today we're talking about one of the most haunted places on earth. I can't take you serious. <laughs> if you're not watching the live stream, Braden is a ghost with a mustache. I'm an apparition. <laughs> uh, no, he's more, he looks like a fucking chicken McNugget with a sheet on him with eyeballs cut out. <laughs> 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 All right, Terminal Canyon, one, Canyon, one of the most haunted places in the world. According to some people. <laughs> and by some people, I mean Brayden. It's also referred to as the Gates of Hell. Well, I mean, there's one place in there that's referred to as the Gates of Hell. <laughs> so I'm not wrong. You're not wrong. No, no. you're not wrong. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're talking about Turnbull Canyon, uh, which is uh, also a great hiking trail, uh, which is located in Los Angeles, County uh, between Hacienda Heights uh, in there. So now, as with all good urban legends, the trouble starts way back with the Native American tribe that used to inhabit the lands known as the Gabrielino Indians back then. Now, the Gabrielino? Gabrielino. Gabrielino. Dan, Dan, these, these, Dan. Is this native Italians invading fucking America? Though? Like, <laughs> well, and it's like well, they're named after the same Gabriel. 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 Hey, forget about it, eh? Or the San we Gabriel. Were here first, eh? yeah. They're named after the San Gabriel mission, which was located there and founded by the Spanish back during those times. Mm-hmm. So the the land is believed to have. Uh, some sort of significance to those Native American tribes, and it's said that at some point, perhaps some of the uh, some of the Native tribes identified this place, this location, as Hatugna, which uh, means the dark place, or even the place of the devil. Oh now, shit! Oh, so, but doing the- a little bit, of, doing a little bit of digging, um, that's not all the way true. Technically, the the Native Americans are. Well, and also, like, it could be a mistranslation because Hatunga Matata means no worries. Well, that's what also I was going to say, because they're, they're already <laughs> calling this. I was going to correct you, Dan, on your pronunciation, because we've already learned about this. This is the dark place. This is the part place the sun does not touch. This is not part of Mufasa's kingdom. We know this. Right. You don't go there. Don't go. Right. Right? We don't go there. We know this place. <laughs> uh, apparently, what the most of the Native Americans, or at least the the native tribes there called it was Owinya. Uh, actually, Hatugna is what they were referred to as uh, what is currently now Yorba Linda, which is another town uh, township over there in, in California or nearby. Tonga sounds cooler. Sure. Yeah. Um, now, it's said that perhaps that this, the dark energies that suffuse Turnbull Canyon perhaps originated or began when the, uh, like I said before, I referred to the the Spanish coming in and colonizing the area, setting up missions in this. And it's if you're, uh, you know, you know anything about history, you know that the Spanish were pretty brutal to those who were hmm. uh, Native Americans here and pretty much did not swiftly embrace Catholicism as their new religion. Yeah, right, right from there all the way down through Central America. South America, any 
any tribe they encountered back in the day. So pretty much if you didn't accept, you know, Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior back then, uh, you were going to just... <laughs> you were going to pay. You're going to pay and you're going to pay dearly. So, you know, <sighs> between... Have you heard the good word? No. <laughs> then you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. I, I, it was said, you know, besides what essentially amounted to genocide, you had the the massive amounts of, of beatings and enslavement and that happened uh, while the Spanish were colonizing most of the what is now the American South American and Central American Southwest. That's so that must have been so fucking confusing that these just randos show up and they're like, check this book out. This is what it is. You're going to love this guy. His name is Jesus. He's cool as hell. I'm going to teach you all about him. And these guys are looking at him. I'm like, I don't even know what you're saying, man. I can't even understand the words that you're trying to tell me. Why do you want me to have this fucking book? What's happening? And then you get murdered because you're not agreeing along. Like, could you imagine that? Like, yep. Why do you want and me to worship this fuck guy? I don't even know who he is. I don't know who you are. <laughs> and we definitely have historical accounts of that friction leading into violent conflict and where the Indians, the Native Americans, uh, you know, actually fought with Spanish colonists. But Spanish colonists having the uh, advent of gunpowder and muskets. Uh, pretty much decimated anything that the Native American, any resistance that the Native Americans could set up. And therefore, you know, after slaughtering the Native population, it said that perhaps the spirits of those who were so beaten, bruised and murdered uh, in those lands has, you know, they stayed st there. They stayed there. It's there almost to this like day. the Spanish never read the Bible. <laughs> Right? Well, a lot of people couldn't read back then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just like, I think we should kill them now. Because it seems I mean, like I'm pretty sure, like Old Testament, dude, it's, it's like you believe God or you should be smited. And so there are reports to this day of people, hikers, and and people who are uh, investigating into the the canyon find themselves, uh, you know, it, whether they're there for the legend or they're there just to take in the scenery. Some people have reported hearing the sound of what sounds similar to or what they could identify as they sound like war drums. Native American drums. Hatunga. Jumanji. Are we sure Jumanji's not buried <laughs> there somewhere in Turnbull County? That's fair. So Turnbull Canyon itself does have a little bit of a history, uh, you know, uh, besides the supernatural ones that uh, tales that are attributed to the place. You also have, um, you know, it, there's a little bit of a strange, um, a couple of historic events that occurred there of some significance. So you have in 1845 is kind of when the history starts and you had these two men uh, who played a prominent part in Turnbull Canyon's history. You had John Rowland and William Workman. What now these name? two, <laughs> these two had immigrated from Taos, New Mexico, where Billy apparently, Workman. <laughs> Where they had uh, apparently run a somewhat successful, I guess, uh, fur trapping business. Then in the mid 1840s, uh, there were a, a, a number of conflicts over the ownership of California. So this is about the time um, you had the U.S. and Mexico fighting over parts of you know the Southwest and what who belonged, you know, who belonged to what, what belonged to who. You know, this is my land. This, this is not your land. <laughs> This and land is mine. All that super land. fun stuff going on. Yeah, they hadn't made that song yet, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and so, in early 1845, uh, William Workman became a captain of a cotter of uh, Americans and Europeans that were serving uh, Governor Pio Pico in his fight against Governor Manuel Mico Torreña in the Battle of Coenga Pass during the Mexican American War. So, you know, uh, I mean, don't you guys just miss the days where you could just take up and just like, I'm going to be a captain, army captain today and let's go. Like, Look just at me. Off. Just, just I'm your, the governor. Just your roaming band of marauders doing whatever you want with no. Pretty much. No oversight of law. Just, yeah, we can do whatever we want here. The four of us would be dead so fast. You know, your little ranch, wherever you've built your little log cabin. They're like, hey, you guys want to go uh, perform a coup d'etat? And it's like. Yeah, all right. Sure. sure. I don't got anything to do today. I, I agree with Brayden. We, we'd be dead in a second. Like, hey, guys. Four of us Let's take up arms against these guys. We show up. We turn around and they shoot us in the back. <laughs> Meet them at the clock tower. Yeah. 
So following this battle, the the governor that they were serving under, Pio Pico, uh, took over and was appointed governor of Alta, California. And so in return, he gave 49,000 acres of land uh, to Workman and Rowland, or between them both. Not a bad chunk of land right there. Ooh-wee. Yeah, all you had to do is like show up one day, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, you just go uh, throw overthrow a governor and then you get 49,000 acres of land. When does that ever happen? Oh, we've, it's hard though. Look what happened to the Capitol last year. It's fucked. This shit's not easy, <laughs> right? Come on now. <laughs> now, again, the, like the Native Americans were still in the middle of all of this and they didn't necessarily like that workman when he came in and, and started forming his, uh, developing the land uh, for his own purposes and, and to increase his own wealth. And then so they would constantly be at odds with each other and they would always apparently try to invade his property. So taking the proper precautions to, to you know, to, to guard against this, uh, Workman's idea was to build an under, underground living space, like essentially a family bunker, safer bunker, yeah. uh, for protection. And then eventually... When relations between him and the Native Americans somewhat cooled, uh, some of them actually went to work for could you, work. Could you, ima- could you imagine that for a second, though? You're like, I've got this land. I'm going to build my house. And like every day you get raided by people trying to murder you and burn down anything that you've built. I mean, that's how like, he got the land, though. That's yeah, just how it was. it was. It's true. Right? Yeah. That's the way she goes. That's man. the way she goes back in the day. Rules of the road. Wait. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it's like it's just some guy showing up and be like, this is mine now. All this land yeah. is mine now. <laughs> It's like, well, nobody loans the land. They're like, I do. <laughs> That's mine. I do now. What a what a time to be alive. Just a free fall. I've been like, everything you see here is mine. Who says me? Me. <laughs> I say this piece of paper. This guy that you've never heard of gave me the land. It's mine now. <laughs> Could you imagine being like a good forger back in the day and be like? This is a declaration from government Governor Pico del would, del Gallo. Would you even need to be a good one? I feel like you'd need to be more of a fucking con artist because half these dudes can't even read. Mm. Yeah, and then you're just like, I I now own all this land, and everyone's like, well, he's got a piece. He's of got paper. a piece yeah. of paper. It must there's be real. words on that paper. I know what words look like, and those look like words. So those look like yes, words to me. Fuck out of here. Hmm. <laughs> Shit, we're trespassing. We better get out of here. So during the time that some of the Native Americans went to go work for. Uh, workmen. There were reports or there have been recorded reports that they said that they had come upon things, apparitions, witches, ghosts on the property. Um, so <laughs> like if the, if they, it wouldn't be surprising if the land was actually cursed somewhat because mm-hmm. workmen, even though he had some type of uh, good fortune and pretty much getting this, this egg, this ton of acreage of land, his later life was plagued by misfortune and well not to mention just like life I w- back then <laughs> when i was when I, yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> point. life was just miserable back then but <laughs> i was i was thinking like if if there was these constant like issues and stuff like perhaps you had like local you know people that were fluent in cursing and stuff that were like doing stuff like that like not like rather than physically going in and trying to attack this person they were just like hey i'm gonna cur- i'm gonna curse this land right and do some hexes or or, oh, or yeah. whatnot i'm gonna because fucking of- break all the mirrors on this guy's property i'm gonna make some fucking voodoo dolls i'm gonna yeah. shit in a corner where you can't find it so it's he's gonna walk under make, make you walk under a thousand ladders yeah it's nothing <laughs> he can do about it i'm gonna step on all the cracks Break all the mom's backs. Uh, but that's the thing. Like, I kind of thought like that maybe that would have been an option back then, too, for some of the Native Americans is like maybe they had uh, hexes and curses that we don't know about that are just lost in time that they would have, you know, like they would have done on the land as well. And maybe some of those curses worked because Workman actually ended up losing most of his 49,000 acres. You could say perhaps you could attribute it perhaps to the curse or to tuberculosis. The, well, no, <laughs> <laughs> not this or time. the fact that he um, I, I believe he tried to he tried to back another governor to overthrow the governor that had given him the land. So he was on the wrong side of the fence at this time. And the governor had found out about it. The current governor found out about it. So took all of that. Then he also had founded a somewhat lucrative 
uh, banking or pr- perhaps maybe not lucrative, but suspect <laughs> like a very loose banking business, uh, which was oh. known to have uh, a number of, you know, a questionable practices this is- uh, while they were doing it. And oh. then when <laughs> there was a sudden recession, basically, you know, uh, one of the, I forgot what there was an economic downturn at one point and then everybody came in rushing in to get their money out. They didn't <laughs> have their money. They had to shut the bank for 30 days. And then, <laughs> You know, he pretty much business, was like, yeah. we don't have any money. And then this, he had to disappear. Is this bank when when this bank closes, is that how fucking good old Robbie Turnbull comes in? Is that the same bank situation? <laughs> so I it's not the same bank. Oh, I, I was gonna say, what if that's fucking crazy? <laughs> um, because he it wouldn't be, it might not be that same bank because uh Robbie Turnbull came much later and then uh, workman actually ended up shooting himself in 1876 on purpose yes <laughs> you <laughs> never know <laughs> he was cleaning he was cleaning his handgun and off it went right? yeah it's a good point of clarification yes he shot himself on purpose in the back of the head twice yeah um, he <laughs> <laughs> two in the chest one in the head yeah he was yeah. on his knees his hands were bound but i don't yeah I mean, I mean, there were a lot of people who were pretty mad at him that they couldn't get their money back from his bank. So I don't know. Oh, exactly. <laughs> well, and that's the th- that's the thing. Like that, like w- it, that would still happen today if everyone went to the bank and was like, "Give me my money." Like we don't have your money. It's all we loaned we it out. We don't, I feel don't like they'd it. be able to get give me my eighteen dollars to seventy five cents. Oh, like, well, yes, can- my money. Yes, yeah. yeah, we'd be able to get my, our my- money, but. My yeah. money, personally, yes. I'll. They'll. They'll. Be, someone would rifle through their pockets. I'm um, sorry, sir. You actually owe us money. So yeah. Here's a. Here's it. a. Here's a moth. Yeah. <laughs> so now the namesake of the cabin or the canyon, uh, as Andrew mentioned before, is Robert Turnbull, who is actually a shepherd who had moved to California seeking to make money in real estate. Uh, this so guy. Not- it- this guy is the perfect combination of Scrooge McDuck and Mr. Conspiracy. <laughs> like literally, like it, it you, when, as soon as you learn about him, he's like, yeah, this is a fucking alcoholic Scotsman that likes to go around buying up all these properties. And all he does is get drunk and fight people. Fight people. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he wants to do is get drunk and fight. Like it's hilarious. And he wins most of them. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was said and it is kind of like it has fallen into local lore that it is said that Turnbull uh, never did business sober. Because nobody who ever <laughs> did, never anybody who ever did a deal with them said they had never seen him uh, not drunk. <laughs> and so in 1885, you had two Quaker men, uh, Akila Pickering and uh, Jonathan Bailey, uh, who were searching for land in California to start a new ca- a new Quaker colony. What, now, they, and Quakers are they're like uh, like Amish. They make the oats. Uh, they're like they're Amish. Exactly what's Amish. a Quaker? Because I remember. Remember hearing the term Quaker before, and I, um, like, I, I, you know, not off the top of my head, but I know I think they're distinct from Amish. They're not exactly, but Amish. it's the same kind they of are like Protestant Christians. Yeah, but it's like the same thing. There were they like they would like they're well, like guess back, they're like the friendly versions of Christians. I've always I've always had them in my head Christians? as being extremely friendly. Well, I mean, <laughs> like Catholics, like to well. Here, here's they're my not question. Spanish is what you're saying. What I'm <laughs> well, saying is Catholic, like are, the, are these the people that you see like dressed old timey like walking around like today? I because I was like back no, then. I guess Amish. they'd be Amish or Mennonites. Like <laughs> yeah, but like no. back then they would have been in fashion. So it's hard. Like you, I mean, I suppose but is Quaker the same? I feel like you're just judging the Quaker Oats guy. They're just like, yeah, like, just like, like, that guy kind of looks Amish. So <laughs> I am judging the I don't, Quaker Oats no, guy. No, I think they're just like they're normal. They just have a certain interpretation, different interpretation of the Bible than some other mm. people, or they have a certain emphasis on certain other uh, yeah. uh, traits and uh, moral morals of the Bible. They are generally united in belief in each human's ability to experience the light within. Or see that God is in every one yeah, of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, can dig that. I can that's get behind that. Do they, that's not yeah. bad. But do they wear? Do what? Like, are they wearing old style clothes? Like, that's what I want to know. Depends I mean, in 1845 and 1885, they were. Yeah, like, that she was in in 1845. <laughs> yeah. That was normal. The Quaker Oats guy. That's the standard. That's standard fashion back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> George Fox, I think. <laughs> So these two men approached uh, Turnbull, who had purchased the land, and they wanted to, uh, they had uh, began the process of acquiring a lot of the land around uh, Turnbull Canyon. Well, 
you know, and it wasn't known as Turnbull Canyon at that time. Like, and it was also one of the only kind of like it had a good, good place for where you wanted to hit, uh, put your flocks because it had one of like the few water sources like in that area, like a flowing. I think it had a flowing uh, stream of some cursed sort. water source, though. Cursed waters. Right. And so they had to, you know, for years uh, try to, you know, send Turnbull offers and he kept turning them down. And then in 1887, they offered their final highest offer of at the time, $30,000. Uh, fucking crazy for 1887. That's, that's like a fucking down payment on an apartment or some shit nowadays. Yeah, it's like a lot. now it's a lot of money uh, back then. And then, so when they, um, uh, you know, finally they wanted this Turnbull accepted the offer, you know, which was essentially uh, half of what uh, they had invested in what is now in his uptown Whitty, Whittier area. So it's like they had purchased it like double its price, essentially. Like it's, it's an insane amount of money for that time. So. And just a year later, Turnbull uh, uh, on January 18th, 1888, he spent the evening as he had many others, apparently drinking, as he as he is known to do, smoking and on the straight west he, coast. On the way back home, he fell off his horse and was arrested for public drunkenness, as had happened on many occasions. Apparently, <laughs> as it happens, no big deal. Mm. Now, after spending the night, what, did, did they take jail, his horse away for a bit? Like, do you get some type of DUI while you're riding a horse intoxicated? Or you I don't think okay? they had DUI back then. I think. Yeah, I don't think you were considered standard. impaired when you were drunk back then. Yeah, I also I don't horse, think it was considered an horse impairment. <laughs> well, I also think the cops were probably the same, in the same boat back then. Everyone had a couple of whiskeys in them. Yeah, well, they still they arrested them though. Be like, hey, listen, we're fucking drunk, but you're really drunk. You gotta go no, to jail. You're dude. too you can't drunk. Can't ride your fucking horse. After spending the night in da- jail, Turnbull returned home broken, bruised, and bloodied, and he couldn't remember. Uh, how he had gotten that way abducted no, dude <laughs> yeah. like this this guy according to his housekeeper he slept 24 hours straight uh he woke up acting super bizarre <laughs> like this he's one of those dudes that would be wearing his petticoat and everything all matching matching little fucking buckles on his boots like a cool quaker all that kind of stuff she said he came up got all dressed mismatched <laughs> cool and then and as soon as he went to leave the house he grabbed one of her like hats which was like a fucking bonnet and like Strolled out of the house. See you later. Like, All right, check you later. <laughs> and she's just like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? And later he would, those injuries would be his undoing as apparently they were deemed the cause for him falling off of his horse uh, off the Macy Bridge into the L.A. River. And then his body was later discovered there and fell off his horse into the river, into the river. Right. That's- but. Suspicious. But the Quite coroners convenient. concluded that it was murder. Ooh. Well, here's the thing, though. Like, he definitely, the night before, like, you can get pretty fucked up falling off your horse. So I'm not necessarily yeah. saying he was beat to death or whatever, or beat the night before. But he definitely, like, the way his, his caretaker described him and everything, he definitely had a TBI. Like, he had some sort of, uh, like, he he had a some type of fucking subarachnoid bleed or something like that. He definitely was not in his right mind there was a slow bleed and i don't know if he's riding his horse had an aneurysm threw a clot fell off his horse and into the river but he definitely was like there was definitely some traumatic brain injury involved but they concluded that it, it must have been murder well, that's well, what the conclusion of the coroner's report well when he they're talking about his shit kick and he took the night before basically so they are saying that those injuries which had caused his uh, which would then be labeled it, as murder right so but it was never solved. Nobody yeah, knew. Yeah, because he had a blood clot him. or something, right? That's how he died. Yeah. <laughs> well, he fell off the. I mean, probably the fall from the bridge is what killed him. But <laughs> no, no, like they they did the autopsy and he had he the reason why he fell off his horse is because he had a fucking uh, he had like a, uh, he threw a clot. He had a fucking massive. Oh, I didn't. Stroke. I didn't read that. I thought like he's just riding his horse and he, in my mind, he got like bludgeoned off his horse that's what and when i read it I was like, that's what i thought happened. got bludgeoned well, no, off his horse that, into that the might river have, that might have been what happened the night before though why uh, he fell off like, why he got knocked off his horse right so i mean like andrew said it, it does have a lot of 
points that seem similar to somebody who's experienced a, a TBI, a traumatic brain injury. And it's like either they've, he got it while getting the shit kicked out of him. I've had a, you know, bar. He's, you know, he said shit, talk shit to the wrong person. Uh, and you know, got I mean, knocked alcohol, the fuck out. thins your blood. And then I he also fell off his horse, which like falling off a horse is no joke. Like you're falling like, Dude, what is that? that? Like fucked up Superman. Hemorrh- five, hemorrh- four or five feet. Like, sure. and if you just like tip over off the back and fucking just jam your skull and, you know, nose dive into the dirt, like, Oh, it's dude, well, I've done them. I've done plenty of fucking falls off horseback when I was at work in rural and like Caramies and stuff like that. Like people get fucked up falling off horses. You get bucked off the back, crack your head open, break your pelvis. Like even just a simple, mangled. simple fall off a horse. I mean, if it's a big horse standing five feet at the shoulders, five, six feet, even that, like at, at a little, even at like a, like a small trot or something. And a big problem we have with people who are intoxicated is like they don't break their fall at all. Like they don't put their hands out to stop their heads from hit. They go fucking oh, I know. face yeah, straight yeah, I down. Know. Face dirt. <laughs> yeah. Like there's no bracing that fall. You are fucking toast. So because he had been kind enough to sell to the Quakers, the Quakers actually named it Turnbull Canyon after him. So it's um, named after Robbie Turnbull, which is pretty cool. No, Quakers, nice people. Just, I'd say just so. living the living for the light. Yeah, I agree. So now you've got Native American curses. You've got suicides. You've got a... mm, Seems to be the guy that's named after got murdered. Uh, Spooktober, it's murder. It's murder. (laughs) Definitely murder. It's murder. It's Spooktober. And you've got all of these three things fit in there. But apparently, it even gets a little bit weirder. Dude, it gets gets weirder. But before we get to that, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months I make 200 to 300 bucks. <laughs> Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code FILL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code FILL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code FILL. So now you have the already a paranormal trifecta of of occurrences that have happened in the history of Turnbull Canyon, making it a, a perfect place for spooky spookiness to arise. But then you get this one part, but f- which for me kind of actually the other stuff I could kind of sell out to maybe like, you know, I could I could probably Urban uh, reason out to be you know, historical people taking liberties with, with historical accounts, things like that. And be like, okay, maybe it's like 100% accurate, but then there's this, there's a bit of a story that comes from the 1930s about a, a, a bit of an eccentric person named William Height, who apparently made his mark as what was known back then as a rainmaker. And he also, Stop. uh, <laughs> Back then, like around that time, you had a lot of people going around um, like Southern California and those areas were uh, experiencing a historical drought. And so you had this kind of wave of, uh, you know, mad, like probably f- mad scientists. You know, Made, yeah, mad scientists, 90% snake oil salesmen, whatever, but people who are promising that they could bring rain uh, to the, you know, water starved crops and uh, places of the, of the, you know, all the, little places in South in Southern California. So you had this one uh, specific person, William Height, uh, who invented what he termed the Electrodome. The hope name. <laughs> Man, I'm not doing it. The Electrodome. Better than. So now he claimed that his device, the Electrodome, <laughs> would generate negative electrical currents in the atmosphere and create a pulsating direct current from the ground to the sky, therefore pulling down like his reason her his explanation was to be able to create rain because you would you know the negative and positive uh you know charges would like attract each other so you're essentially just like pulling rain 
out of the sky as you know if you're following along with his reasoning and so this would allow people who were utilizing his device to create rain displace fog and even prevent frost from forming on crops so basically being able to manipulate moisture in any form so it's nothing like the thunderdome no, no, which I, was a little bit disappointing. A little bit yeah, disappointing when I, I found that out. It's yeah. fucking let down, man. Mad Max isn't going. So there. this is like the early stages of like cloud seeding, harp, uh, harp, energy. Yeah, early, wet, yeah weather yeah, manipulation. Stages of what some people would term like this was like proto harp right here, uh, weather control by technological means. You know, not necessarily chemical means like like rain, like cloud seeding, but you know, actual you know ionizing radiation or electrical currents or ionizing currents that would allow him to manipulate the atmosphere in such a way uh, as to produce rain. You're right at like the end of Tesla's, all his research and AC currents and stuff. Like the playing with the ionosphere and it's pretty cool. Yeah, now you have this mad scientist in, uh, you now have a mad scientist in a laboratory in Turnbull County or Turnbull Canyon. Right. So he got some financial support from a citrus farmer named John Dodrill. And so that allowed William to be able to build. I mean, it wasn't enough to build exactly what he wanted. I think he wanted to build multiple towers, but he got enough to build one big one is what he figured. One big one's better than a bunch of little tiny ones uh, in his mind. And so he built this old one. Uh, which was also, um, you know, he saved a bit of scrap, you know, saved a bit of scrap because he based it off of an old existing oil tower that was located there in Turnbull Canyon. Now, the laboratory was sitting on an 80 foot tower. So you, you kind of imagine this an electro dome reached about 125 feet from the ground to the sky. So it's huge, big towers sitting out there. And it's said that his final test of his experiment happened on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. <laughs> New Year's Eve. <laughs> New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Eh? At the strike of midnight in 1932. And then after that, William Height was never heard from again. Oh. Because he went back to the future, baby. Yeah, right. He turned himself into bulkhead Bill. <laughs> fused. He's fused <laughs> into Turnbull. Philadelphia Cannon. experiment style. No. Maybe, maybe we've got it all wrong. In the Philadelphia experiment, they didn't have a Tesla coil. It was actually a fucking electrodome. It's right? a, uh, William Hyde is essentially lost to history after that. He is pretty much because he went back to the future. Same shit. <laughs> Man, it's pretty cool because I kind of looked into the because I was like the weather, weather manipulation. I was like, man, that's pretty sweet. And I guess there is a company called Australian Rain Technologies and they claim to use this guy as, as like their, they're not like using his work, but like that was what it inspired them. And they use charged like aerosol particles that can be turned on and off in the ionosphere to create rain. Oh, that's cool. And that they just finished like a 10 year study and like pretty pretty steady they can increase rainfall by about between like 15 and 20 percent in a region using this technology it's like these charged that's fucking sweet charged aerosol particles into clouds and then when you like i guess i guess it's some type of wireless energy and when they turn them on it can it has like a like 15 to 20 percent chance of of increased rainfall up to 90 percent but there that's like you know one percent of nine can be 90 percent but like so this cloud seeding I guess it's been like 70, 80 years of them claiming like, oh, yeah, we can create rain. We can do this. We can do that. But now it looks like they actually can in some ways because they all, they kind of use this technology at uh, the Olympic Games in Beijing to kind of to decrease smog. But you, <laughs> yeah, they filter out the smog by making it rain, but you can only do it over a, like a small region. I feel like there's other space. ways to do that too. Maybe like cut down on pollution. Yeah, maybe a change from coal power or whatever. But I, I just thought it was interesting that there is Come like this. Come on. This, Let's not get the, crazy. <laughs> how did they, how did he afford to build this tower, Dan? Like, did he use his own money or did he have a bunch of investors? No, he had the investor. Uh, like I said, he had the, uh, it was yeah, a citrus. So, most of the funds came from a citrus farmer, John Dodro. Oh, so it didn't work. And then he, dis he fucking disappeared after that. No, man, like, he was fuck. sucked into the, the nether portal that he, that he opened up. I gotta get the fuck up. out of here. I, I don't know. This, this money, it's This bullshit. is big citrus written the, all over it. The massive <laughs> amounts of electrical energy, ionizing electrical energy that he used in the electro, the electro dome, uh, ripped open a portal between our world and the nether world and he was sucked into it never to be seen again. I mean, that I, I, is that hard to, to understand? It, it is. Like it a is picture. I'm on. I'm it on is board with weird. That. 
that a guy of this stature who is working on something like this that is such like a a prominent part of history in this time essentially disappears completely like that that seems very strange like that's going to be easy to disappear back then go to a different country and no one's ever going to fucking know yeah but or someone hear would be like you again. know you think someone like of this sort would be like and then he moved away like from him being no, but like he wanted doing, to disappear yeah. That's the thing is he he wanted to fucking disappear, so he disappeared. I feel like He's, back then, for sure, you could disappear. It, it's just it for me. It's it's strange that he it's like he does a test at the stroke of midnight, which is a weird Doesn't fucking work. time to do a test. Great, and then poof, and then he, he's never never seen or heard from again in history. He's embarrassed. Spent so, all this money. I'm a failure. <laughs> Going to fucking Mexico, baby. So now after after this, you start getting, you know, uh, out throughout, I guess throughout the Depression. Um, there's also tales of other things kind of happening. This is when you kind of get the more, uh, a bit more sinister uh, happenings going on within Turnbull Canyon. And people kind of describing that there's some type of dark force which is taking up residence within the canyon itself. Ooh. And it seems to draw evil to it. I got a I got a spooky one right around this this time spooky. frame here. Great Depression. You want some of this? Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's <laughs> a spook. Please, please don't talk about the Great Depression because that's depressing enough. <laughs> it's come well, it's it starts. It's it gets even part more of fucked it. up though. Not only are people broke, but people are dying. So around the same time, obviously desperate times, Americans all over the country were struggling to make ends meet. People died of starvation, disease, and basically were living in complete despair. Um, it was during these bleak years that people from, how do you say it? Pu- Puente? Puente, yeah. Puente? Puente Hills began to hear strange rumors of the new residents of Turnbull Canyon. A large group of men and women with no children, wearing black robes. They were numerous and organized, and their business was horrifying. One witness carefully sneaking up on the camp was able to take a close look at their rights and returns to tell the tale. A young boy, 12 years old at most, was strapped to a cross in the, cir- in the center of a circle of people. Entranced and paralyzed with fear, the Puente Hills resident watched as the robed figures danced around and around, chanting in a language he could not recognize. Satan is good. Satan is your friend. <laughs> I want to kill everyone. After time, the chanting suddenly increased. That's in English. They didn't understand English? The cross was hoisted upright, the child struggling but unable to cry out through the the rough cloth that had been stuffed into his mouth. Pulling the cross back down and then hoisting it up the other way, the townsman finally truly realized what was happening. An upside-down cross... I don't know, that doesn't make sense. But An upside-down cross, but he could do nothing. The cultist struck the boy again and again, blood flying out from every direction. Eventually, their fury subsided, and so did the blows. Peering close, the Pointe Hills resident breathed a sigh of relief to see the boy was still breathing. But what happened next, he could never forget. They took him away. They simply removed the boy, stuffing him in a large sack and tossing him roughly into a wagon. The man returned down to tell the tale, but he was not believed until some month later when a rash of kidnappings and dis- disappearances struck the area. So they also said like around this time, because of the Great Depression, there was like a huge uptake in children being abandoned or put up for adoption. And they they theorized that these cults were the ones that were adopting these kids or maybe even just kidnapping them from the orphanages. And caught, you know, using them for ritual sacrifice. Oh, well, it, it, it's one of those things too. In this time, what? It's the ghost. It's the ghost talking. It's in this time. You have all these people that there. It's you know, there's great despair everywhere. So it's for me. It's it's not a reach for these people, especially in this time, to you know think that maybe these kind of practices or sacrifices or stuff like these kind of rituals might what change favor for someone no what no what do you mean 
This isn't fucking Roman times where you got to sacrifice a bull to get a good harvest. This is like fucking late 1800s. It's where the, like 1930s. Think, or, sorry, the 1930s where you think it's fine to sacrifice a child to, for economic gain? Like, maybe, what are maybe, you talking maybe about? Maybe some of these saying, people. Desperate times call, call for, for desperate sacrifice. measures. No. <laughs> call for ritual sacrifice. Ritual sacrifice? sacrifice. <laughs> That is all, that is one of the alleged. God forbid that our viewers just start plummeting one time. We'd stop making some Patreon money. Brain's like, well, guys, I guess we gotta kill a kid. No big <laughs> so deal. How do you think we, we got, got our Spotify deal? <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. And why do you think we, then we had a change of conscience? Didn't uh, didn't do another one, and we lost it. So yes. that's our yeah. fault. So that is also one of the legends that is attributed to the uh malevolent energies or the malevolent appeal of Turnbull Canyon. Uh now you also apparently have uh which was an actually a real thing and you can uh, this was in the news at the time in 1952 you had an air line an, air, an actual airplane crash happen in Turnbull Canyon. Right into the canyon. Um, this was in April 18th of 1952, and it was reported that L.A. International Airport Control Tower had lost contact with a f- Flight 416 that was being piloted by Lewis Powell. Now, around 10 a.m. that same morning, a rancher named Hayden Jones was driving around the Whittier Heights um, ranch when he saw smoke rising from the hills. Now he was concerned, of course, as being you know being seen black smoke uh, in in this area, potentially a forest fire or something like this. He climbed up a hill uh, to find flaming pieces of steel that had smashed into the hillside of the canyon. Mm. Now those who inspected the crash site said the plane the plane seemed to have burst into flames on impact. And the local ranchers didn't actually spot the burning plane plane until at 10 a.m. that morning because the fog had been exceedingly heavy uh, that that morning. So it had actually concealed the the smoke within that fog. That fog was charged with the time traveling energy from William Height. Exactly. A total of 29 people were on board that flight. 416 and they were all orphan children and all the passengers were said to have died at the moment of impact like they said that the it was difficult to identify a lot of the bodies because they had been burned and pretty much to a crisp well and like mashed into the fucking ground like a bunch of little bulkhead bills like they were one with the canyon at this point so this is where you get some people saying that perhaps something had pulled them into the canyon. Like, how do you crash so hard into a canyon like that deliberately? Well, well here, like, this is kind of how they, they summarize what happened. So, uh, when the plane, like, so right around 2.30, they were talking to air control because the fucking crazy thick uh, fog that you were already talking about that actually hid the plane, right? So nobody really saw it until 10 o'clock the next day. Uh, so they were descending into Burbank when they were radioing with uh, ATC and were like, listen, we can't see fuck all. This is like sketchy. So air traffic control rerouted them to LAX. Mm. So they were rerouting to LAX and it seemed like the fog started to follow them. Now, right around, like Dan was saying, three o'clock air traffic control reported losing all uh, communication with them. And around the same time, the residents around the Turnbull uh, Canyon area reported feeling, hearing and sound like hearing that the fucking plane was scraping the fucking rooftops of the local residents. Like they heard it shake their fucking house as being like, what the hell? So it turns out because they were initially prepping for fucking uh, descent into Burbank. They forgot to retract the landing gear. So as the landing gear were st- was still down, apparently the pilot tried to go underneath the fog, not knowing that he was in a canyon, right? We, so he descended under the fog to be able to get a better f- look at what was happening. One of the landing gear got caught on the canyon itself, causing the fucking plane to spiral into the fucking side of the building, or building the canyon. They basically ripped off a huge chunk of the canyon with the wing. There's like a giant laceration still to this day in the canyon and then sent them straight down into the ground. Well, he got, so you're he saying got real something low. 
pull them into well, the canyon. Gravity like vortex. Weirder, gravity vortex from the canyon pulled on the lowered landing gear, clipping the top of the canyon, sending them into a gravity it fueled was the ghost right? destruction. Of, you're saying you're saying the dark fog. Of the, it's what, a ghost you, of the ancient Minestroni native tribe that pulled them down. It, it seems right. weird Vortex to me that a plane would want would risk traveling at that low of an altitude in the first place. That they're clipping their fucking landing well, they gear. Well, but they shouldn't have. For the big problem, they would have been fine if the landing gear wasn't down. Apparently, that was the that's, big problem, and they had no close. idea. That's pretty like, close. Like honestly, were, how big's landing? Oh, gear? I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disagree like, with you. But the, like, the pilot's like, oh, I didn't know I had the fucking landing gear down that gives us three well, feet. Well, we don't clearance. know because he's fucking dead. Well, yeah, so but we that's no what I'm clue. saying. I'm like, that's that's dangerously low. Yeah, but he had no idea he was in a canyon, right? The no, it's like that was this. The demons of the canyon created the fog. The gravity well, of the canyon pulled them down. Well, they had a couple of questions, though, because, like, I get this same pilot was actually supposed to be pulled off from working at doctor's order because they had a heart attack a month before this happened. So they wondered, possibly, did he have a jammer while he was mid-flight? Well, usually a co-pilot, and, though. There was two, or, yes. Or and then, oh. this fucking weird machine... Uh, what's the height's name or whatever is Willie Billy Height? William Height, yeah. His machine fucked with the instruments because this person flew too close to the canyon. So I'm maybe he you. didn't realize how low he was because whatever this fucking he was fucking around with with this radio tower was fucking up with this guy's contraptions. Yes, the time another time travel time travel of the electrodome fucked with this plane. Another weird thing, too, is I guess three years prior to this crash that the pilot who was piloting the plane invented this navigation tool that was specifically made for navigating through adverse weather conditions, um, including fog. And he brought that to the Aeronautics uh, Aeronautics Commission. Does that sound right? Mm-hmm. Let's pretend yeah, that's right. That sounds right. Uh, commission brought it forward to get it like get it patented and made. And they fucking turn their noses up at it and like, yeah, no, we have no interest in this. And then so the guy's family stood there with a picture of the designs of his fucking invention, saying like claiming that this would have saved that crash and like had a picture of it in the fucking paper after the plane crash. And like, this should have saved our father's life and all 28 other people that were part of this plane. Oh, crazy. Do they now use it? Bizarre. I don't know. I'm sure they got some pretty sophisticated instruments for de- yeah for detecting because what is it this was 1952 yeah we're not yeah. we're not long after like you know commercial air travel had really begun so now you have you have that going on you had an entire you know 29 souls perishing and and flaming flaming steely death uh in turnbull canyon but also apparently you have stories of an insane asylum because what spooky place would be complete without stories and uh you know local uh local legends of an insane asylum being somewhere in the location um now this insane asylum was said to have been put um behind and the only evidence that people point to is there is a like a mishmash chain link fence that is glowing seals red off apart glowing of, red with molten lava flowing through it marking hell if by molten lava you mean like overgrown with local vegetation and grass and and prior and thorny probably like venus flytraps yeah and, thorny and fucking savage, poison ivy savage looking plants that will well, venus fly, um, fly traps i know only grow in like a certain place in north carolina i think actually yeah and hell and turnbull canyon yeah, yeah and hell i mean i suppose <laughs> so um uh, this insane asylum that is sealed off like this gate is apparently uh been given the name the was it the hell's gate hell's or gate. gates of hell gates of, gates of hell, yeah. hell. And then things like that and they're saying the that perhaps mouth. like this insane asylum that had been there had been a place of of course you know abusive experiments um uh, the places where the the insane had gone to essentially die and disappear and lobotomized lobotomized and apparently burned down in the 1940s but that wasn't the end now sometime around 1962 as the tale goes there was a group of teenagers that were partying in the ruins of this insane asylum and one of them 
uh, decided to explore a bit deeper into the insane asylum, and he came upon a long dormant electroshock device. Oh, you know, shit. thinking that it, <laughs> thinking that I guess it looked pretty neato, uh, he managed to. Um, interact with the device and apparently it pumped several thousand volts through his body and he died there. It's like the, the accounts of that one too. It's like he put it on his head and the second he basically touched all the electrodes and they all made contact, his friends stood there as they watched this kid electric barbecued, barbecued like straight up barbecued skin melting, like, Ooh, we're talking raiders. We're talking raiders here. Like yeah, raiders. Nazi like terri- terrifying. Like watching someone just receive an unimaginable amount of electricity pulse through their body. People don't really melt. I'll be honest with you. They don't really melt. They melt well, I don't the, think it melted, but he, char- he, he melted yeah. inside out. And it was like, it's, they were like, they. I imagine it's not a fun thing to watch someone get that kind of elect- electricity go through them. Um, <laughs> So, like there's still power going to this place. Well, that's what I was going to. How long had that's it what been? I was going to ask. Yeah, is, is supernatural power, spooky <laughs> power. It's it's charged <laughs> by a ghost battery with thousands it's electro- of volts. Electrodome. Did you not? Yeah, we, we just talked. It's the about power this. of the electrodome through through space time, coming back to this this time, zapping this person. Mm-hmm. Can't argue with that. Yeah. So at this point, Dan, just to because the the stories I heard that at this point in time, this this asylum was just the foundation was left, really. Like yeah. it had burnt down. Uh, yes, yeah, it had been it had burned down. Well, they were in the ruins. Like I said, they were in the the story goes that they were in the ruins of this place. You know, hanging out, smoking yeah, movies. But, I don't know. So it was just like high. a charred fucking little electro shot. Because that's exactly yeah. where you want to get high is in a fucking abandoned sailing asylum. Like, come on, people. I get, well, I guess there hadn't been a lot of horror movies. Back hey, then dude, a bunch of trope, teenage so, Zells. <laughs> this is well, this is before, Zells be all this is before getting high in Zell? places was well, a movie we, trope, we used like. to not even get kel- <laughs> high, but like Zell by Zell's parents' house, there's like all these sketchy ass caves. Oh, yeah. And when you go in those caves and you turn on a light, all that's on the wall, 420. <laughs> <laughs> sketchy ass, so, yeah, caves, 420. So it's like, before it was legal, shit. like people would try to find all sorts of places to get high. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I mean, then that checks out. That'd be like that's the one yeah. place that you'd want to go is a haunted, insane asylum because nobody would go there. Yeah, no one's gonna bug you except the ghost. This per- place is burnt to a crisp. All that, all that remains is the foundation, concrete foundation, and then in the perfect area there is a intact electro. Helmet or probe, whatever. Shock o yes. Just per- and then connected to that is a hidden underground battery that's stored charge for all these years. That's what's happened here. Uh, yeah, I liked your I liked your whole fucking Thunderdome explanation more though. I'll be honest. Okay, so it's so. this device is charged through the ionist ionosphere through space time by the electrodome. I, and this guy electrodome. 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 A lot of big words there, so it has to be real. I like it. So you have some of these, le- uh, perhaps, you know, uh, suspect or legendary encounters that have happened in Turnbull Canyon. But actually, Turnbull Canyon has been the site of a few actual, Murder. <laughs> actual tragedies. Murder? Murder! Indeed, murder on uh, in this one. Uh, at least one of those deaths was the tragic death of Gloria Gaxiola, which she was a 17-year-old girl from Baldwin Park. And she apparently had been shot in the head brutally then dragged behind a car and uh, kill and killing her uh if the shot in the head wasn't enough and uh, in 2002 uh in right along turnbull canyon road in hacienda heights and then they you know police actually couldn't solve the murder for five years um you know despite their best efforts and then finally a witness stepped forth would actually help them crack the case and it uh, her when they, they they put out an article in one of the newspapers talking about uh, talking to some of the members of her local church and they were talking to some like one of them where her brother was a pastor another pastor was talking about how Turnbull Canyon was a bit known as this kind of place that was kind of infamous for being involved in things like um uh, like dark happenings there. Like they, they, they identified it as a place of uh, some place that you would find the devil. 
Ooh. Is where you is this thing? Well, and the then, gates of hell there. Of course. What do you think's behind the gates of hell? It's fucking devil, right? <laughs> yep. And yeah. kind of and kind of backing that up. Um, one of the newspaper articles had a quote from a uh, uh, like a a retired uh, Los Angeles County firefighter who said he had worked for 13 years um, out there on Turnbull Canyon Road, and he said that this is it was a good place and place where they would often find the bodies of people who had been executed or bodies had been dumped off by local gangs what better place it's the perfect location for that we do know now though that the canyon it may taketh but it also giveth back zombies we have yeah what kind of maybe maybe we don't know i mean you know what if there's two options here this lady christina martinez is either like dan said a zombie or she's a very distant relative of rasputin because mm. that's those are the only two things that make mm. fucking sense yeah. here. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> listen to this story. Is there a Hatunga? Is there a Hatunga casino? Or are we sure? No, no oh, casino. Not. <laughs> Why the fuck are we talking about casinos? Well, because you said to give it give back. It. I thought maybe casinos never give back. <laughs> did they deal? Did the casinos deal with how deal with life? <laughs> they, I think sometimes. Well, it depends. Well, we'll see here. All right. So Christina Martinez. Struck it big at the Hatunga Casino on August 4th, 2009. She was at a party with her her boyfriend and a group of friends. When the group of friends were decided to go home early, offered Martinez a ride home. She said yes. Boyfriend decided to stay at the party. So on their way home, they decided to stop at the beach first. Uh, Martinez said she didn't find anything odd because she had been going to the beach late at night with these individuals several times before. It was... When the group started driving north toward Whittier, that she realized something was wrong. But when she asked where they were going, nobody replied. Then all of a sudden, one of the guys in the front seat whispered to another to grab the rope and tie her hands. Mm -hmm. That launched a physical and verbal struggle where Mendoza, one of the uh, perpetrators, and Mraz eventually pinned her down, binding her wrists with a rope. Mendoza pulled out two syringes, she said, and jammed one and then the other into her neck. The second syringe was pulled out several times and pushed back into her neck, she said. It appeared Mendoza was reloading it, though she didn't know with what. She described feeling a a rush of heat and then choking and coughing and struggling to breathe as she became nauseous. The driver drove to the Turnbull Canyon Road in North Whittier and parked his green two-door Mitsubishi Eclipse on the shoulder, Martinez said. Once parked, Mraz grabbed her hair and shoved her head out of the open passenger door, while Alea then pulled her out by her head as she stumbled. She was knocked to the ground and then simultaneously beaten and kicked by the three men. She then blacked out briefly after she was hit in the back of the head with a very hot, heavy object. Martinez said she became to come, come she began she began <laughs> to come to when she heard Mraz say she's still alive, hit her again. So they hit her again, picked her up, and dragged her to the edge of the canyon where they threw her threw her down, where she was witnessed getting back up to her knees. So one of the assailants then climbed down to where she was, grabbed her by the back of her hair and slashed her throat, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, at least four times. So, apparently trying to saw off her fucking head. The men later returned to stab Martinez again and pushed her down another ledge before leaving. Battered and bleeding, she fled to a nearby home where a resident dialed 911. She fucking lived, boys. This woman almost got her head sawed off how? It, which was either with the like the most blunt knife on the hi- history of the fucking planet. Butter knife. Seriously. Well, even the butter knife though serrated, like you're getting oh man. Like I I mean she one, lived. I mean she's not gonna be singing in the choir anytime soon, but I'm sure she you know she lived. But oh, dude. She, she was like, protected by the She broke the curse. She was protected the, by the electrical energies. She was surrounded by a lightning dome. That's the only I thing mean, that makes sense here. Kept her alive. Boys. How did this woman survive this? That's insane. How did you? You tell us. How did she survive? I don't know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. This place is so fucking haunted that not even death himself will go there to collect a soul. Oh well, but so many. But what about all the other people that died? 
Well, he threw- anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, the it's one not, thing that I'm trying this place, <laughs> the, the, I've been trying to look into this whole time, and because I can't figure out what was in those needles, and it sounds like they were injecting her with fucking insulin, which is fucking crazy. But I don't yeah, understand. That's like, really expensive. What? Well, not only that, <laughs> it's crazy expensive in the states, and it's like okay, like it's kind of a fucking interesting way to kill somebody, put them into like. Uh, hypoglycemic shock, whatever, let them like drift off into sleep and die. But like, so if you're going to fucking inject them with insulin, like that should be it. Why are you going to go ahead and like bash them with rocks and stab them and saw yeah. off their heads? Like, Jesus. They like, really went for it and it didn't work somehow. What's that guy's name in fucking Austin Powers? Mustafa or whatever? Will Ferrell plays him? Yeah. <laughs> you know where he's supposed to, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> I've broken <laughs> both my, my legs. legs. Very badly. And I'm Can severely you call me an burnt. <laughs> yeah. <It's>, like, <laughs> the, this chick didn't want to die, though. Props to Christina Martinez. Oh, she's a badass. Maybe she broke the curse. Or maybe she's a fucking zombie coming back for revenge. Or she's zombie. Revenge. Well, you, you know what it is, though? Like, maybe she was helped by, like, vengeful spirits who had been murdered in that on those grounds and saying. stuff. Who were just true. like, we're like, That's no. protected her. Like, no. We're like, they're, they're also like one. protectors, like protectors of people victimized the in innocent. that area. Rob, the innocent. Yeah, like, maybe it's something like that. Like, because uh, it, it seems wild so what you're saying is it's like a bunch of fucking like patrick swayze ghosts and like casper Mm -hmm. and stuff that are like we're gonna protect this fucking canyon we're sick of this shit yeah like you no 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 we're not gonna have evil men come and do evil things here anymore like we're this is a nice place we're We're gonna make pottery here we're We're gonna do good things yeah erotic pottery (laughs) yeah like we're not down for this kind of shit yeah Yeah, that's the uh, that's probably the most recent thing of the creepy creepy twists and turns of turnbull canyon how did she live? Oh, yes. I know How we can get the live? final thoughts on the the creepy look. The as Braden said, the most haunted place one in of the world, the most haunted one canyon. of the most haunted places on earth. Well, listen, this is also one of in this is part of my final thoughts here. This is one of the most popular places for amateur ghost hunters who are trying to is kick it? off their YouTube channel to go to. <laughs> Because, my God, you can get lost on hours and hours and hours of people visiting the gates of hell. Hell. (laughs) Some find more stuff than others. Most don't find anything. But as for, like, this area and the, like, for me, it, it has all the recipe of, like, what you need for a spooky area. But, like... I I am a I'm a firm believer that once like you get these stories and you get start start getting these urban myths and they start bleeding to everyone and everyone starts to know and everyone starts to think that like hey this place is a scary place this place is a haunted bad things happen you almost as a population will that place to do these things like you are giving this place that energy to do that Where, you know, I go back to like, I believe our conscious thought has more power than we believe. And when you have masses of people thinking that this is a bad place and an evil place, you give rise to those kind of energies that feed on that. And I believe that wholeheartedly. So I I think that mixed with the, you know, the, the Spanish absolutely murdering, um, Native Americans there back in the past. And like that, and the Native Americans already said that this was a dark place and the Spanish forced them there and then murdered them in masses in this place that they already thought there was something wrong with, right? So I, I do believe that this place holds some sort of negative energy. I think it's older than human history, though. Like, I don't think that whatever's there and is, you know, affecting the land, I think it's older than time itself because we have these stories right from the Native Americans that this place, there's something wrong with it. So I think this is just one of those places on Earth that terrible things have always happened and the energies there have just lingered. And we'll linger and continue to linger long after we're gone fucking lingerer linger lingerer do you have to let it linger uh i I, i'll agree with brayden i mean all the stories right from 
right from our like the history we have the dark place the place of the devil plane crashes so, you know people being murdered murder people being almost murdered <laughs> and then almost some murder. somehow surviving misfortune right like yeah i mean <laughs> misfortune this is a why I we should have said misfortune first. I mean to say misfortune at the end of all that. Other stuff seems like it's a cop out, but say it again: misfortune and then the plane crash and murder and everything else. Then it, it, yeah, every, everything that's happened here and the stories and the the legends that go along with it makes it just a creepy place to talk about. And mm-hmm. it may it might be just like some places are you know just draw in that type of negative energy naturally. From whatever reason, like we talk about, we talk about ley lines and stuff before. Maybe there's, you know, those are places of power and spiritual spirituality. But maybe there's negative, you know, like a negative ley line place, and you know, a, a canyon like this, Pavegli Island, other places we talk about. Bad shit happens here, man. But having said that, if you're in the area, go during the day. Let us know. There's some really nice bike trails through this canyon. It's hiking. Really nice, actually. If you, <laughs> it looks like a beautiful canyon. <laughs> Just don't go at night. That's when the bad shit happens. Well, it, or if you're in the area and you're driving through at night, let us know. Like, do you get a spooky feeling? Like, sometimes you just go to these areas and you know, like, and I'm curious. Like, I would love to go to it one day and, you know, next time we're in California, maybe we will. Mm-hmm. When was the last person murdered? Not that long ago. 20, 2002? Or, no, she was almost murdered. Almost murdered in 2009. Oh, 2009. See, I don't want to get almost paranormally activated in 2022 or something like I that. I want you so want to get fully paranormally activated. No, not any of it. Full. None of it. Hundred percent. None. No. Nope. You don't either. Don't pretend like you do. I got the, I got a Ouija board and so I actually have two, and I'm thinking about stacking them up this Halloween. Playing, Double. Playing two at once with two planchettes. Shit. See what happens. It's terrifying. Look like a DJ playing both boards at the same time. Ouija, ouija, ouija. Zo, 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 Confuse them. You get two talking through you to each other. It's like when you die. I've seen those videos of the you dial two Chinese restaurants and get them talking to each other. Same thing. That's pretty hilarious. It's Spooktober, so it's haunted. It's haunted all times of the I mean, year. Just, it's even more haunted now. Just go back, boys. Go back to the pert, pu- the pert plus paradox. There's got to be a shit ton of pert plus running underneath that canyon. Tons of terrible yeah. stuff's happened. Bad juju all over that place. Yeah. Right? Come on. That's a, I, it's as paranormally activated as it gets. And I, I think as more stuff, I, I honestly, I think that these places get negative energies. And as more stuff happens... It just builds and builds and builds and builds. Like I, I think it, it's. We getting honestly here. Are we yeah. actually getting honestly. Or are we keeping yeah. it in Spooktober? It's Spooktober. Spooky as hell. Okay. Okay. Honestly. Well, those are two different things for me. If we're getting honest, then I gotta fucking shoot holes all over through this fucking place. But if we're you keeping it in Spooktober. There's no. There's no, no, no the Spanish already did that, man. Dude, there's no holes yeah. to chew. There's no holes to chew. <laughs> Um, we even, even have, we have people. We have people in the comments of the live stream saying that they drive through there at night with friends. And the feeling they live to tell the tale is eerie. It's eerie. How could it not be? If you know the legend and you're there, don't stop. Don't stop to take a pee or and just keep going. No matter what you believe. Well, I mean, according to Braden's logic, anything that you, if you think about that, it is haunted, then it becomes haunted. So (laughs) no, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. That's exactly what you said. (laughs) I agree. Okay, I will agree with you. But the difference (laughs) is this: the difference is like you as a single person being like, "This is haunted." doesn't have as much power as like a as a community of tons of people consciously thinking this is a haunted place together that's what gives the power like you going Dan and being like well my fucking kettle is haunted guess what your kettle's not haunted motherfucker you get a couple you know? hundred thousand people going like Dan's kettle's haunted might be haunted you know what? maybe maybe well, how you do start you know get, that their consciousness know? is more powerful than my singular consciousness this is true i i, I know i've had a conversation with you outside this podcast Ooh. <laughs> no. i can't take this brain ghost anymore no, he looks like the he looks at like the spooky chicken nugget 
What? <laughs> Hold on. Well, Andrew, I find <laughs> the ghost of the chicken nugget I ate yesterday. Oh, don't you remember the little chicken nugget <laughs> you get when you're happy meal? It was a little ghost that was shaped like a little. It looks exactly the same. I'll find it for you. It's hilarious. No. <laughs> a, ha- a nugget ghost. Oh, what? Oh, now he's just gone. Just dis- oh. disappeared. He's ghosted. <laughs> Anyways, creepy, creepy place. If you're in the area, let us know. Let us know what you. Th- let us know what you think. Send us a message. If you got a creepy story about it, call into Cosmic Cosmic Channels and tell us. Yeah. And before we get into Theory of the Week or anything, if you're not on our Patreon already, you're not supporting your boys and you want to know a way to easily help us out, go to our YouTube channel. Give us a like and subscribe. Let all of our videos just play through the evening. Just let them play. Let them build up that algorithm around you. Woo! Love, love it. Put it in the group. Looks exactly the same. All he's missing is a little blue hat. A little blue hat? Yeah, it's him. Mm. Yeah, I, I'll get that to you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Now, this current one, you just have a chicken nugget, but half your body is also showing. Yeah, it's not, it's not working. <laughs> too There's well. McDonald's in the background. Not ideal. Uh, it's bizarre. All right, theorite yeah, of the right. week. Ooh, I'm going to butcher this one, boys. Brains and explain why this. Fine gentleman is the theory of the week, but I'm going to butcher this name. We all do. Ryan Eckenrot. Well, Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty close. Well, one, he's the theory of the week because he is one of our new top tier supporters on Patreon. Uh, thank you for that. And if you've been on our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash alien theorists theorizing um you may have noticed that ryan has been trying to post a couple ufo videos for the past week um (laughs) he would post it and he would have some sort of settings on private or whatnot and then he would resubmit the post and it would still be on private then he would submit it again and it was still on private but through his sheer perseverance determination finally determination heart Grit, a man of sheer oh. will. Yeah, he willed it to be, and it did. After countless attempts, he finally, uh, even after I was commenting, making fun of him, I was accepting the posts, knowing that they weren't working. I said, "Hey, try again," and he finally got it. And because we had some fun with him as we were waiting for that video to pop up, uh, Ryan, you are the theorite of the week. Of the week. Thanks for that. Thanks for supporting the show. All right, it's that time again. If you're not supporting the show and you want to help out your favorite podcast, help out your boys, head over to Patreon, find the link in the podcast description. I think we got well over 200 hours now of bonus content. So, Oh, yeah, we're getting close sure. to one 250 for getting, sure. Getting up there, more stuff. 250. Bonus episode every week. 250. Uh, you guys want to help me with some names on here? Yep. I um, see my list. All right. Start off with... Jorge Figueroa, Figueroa, Carly, Figueroa, 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 Carly, Joan and Tony Rodriguez, Christopher Powell, Anthony Perch, Cy Keenan, and Carol Bradley goes up a tier. Then we got Willie Nori, Raymond, Moon Toast. That Mac, Jonathan Chandler. Oh, and then Theodore out of the week, Ryan Eckenrod. Fifty dollars supporter, baby. Woo! Woo! Fucking hats off to you, buddy. And then uh, this guy who comments on every single one of my fantasy football posts. <laughs> Zell is by far the best one. Damn right. It is football. God damn it! It's American football. Thank you for donating. Uh, then we got Roberto Garza. James Garvey, Jacob Ludwig, Soap Sheet, Kyle Garrity, and Coleman Stewart. And as we say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the sky. See you in after hours.
Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months, I make 200 to 300 bucks. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code FILL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code FILL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code FILL.